what's up a very very warm welcome to all of you i hope all you guys are excited for today's session i hope all of you guys are ready for today's session and i know that most of you guys might be wondering but sir transportation in animals and plants but aren't you physics why are you teaching this where is pratish sir what happened to pratish sir i know that most of you guys would be confused but guys do not worry because you all know that i teach chemistry biology and physics on the vidanto platform but i have been teaching just physics on youtube so i thought what if let's bring a change for just one chapter so i am right here today guys and today we'll be learning one of my favorite biology chapters from grade 7 that is transportation that happens in animals and plants one of the exciting interesting a little bit difficult for all of you guys and that chapter is what we'll be discussing right today so again a very warm welcome to my class my name is mohan master teacher of science from vidantu and a very warm welcome to vidantu young wonders as well so with that shall we start with this amazing chapter that we have for all of us today okay and if you guys are new here don't you forget to subscribe to vidantu young wonders guys and if you guys are there on instagram don't forget to follow me my instagram handle is learn underscore with underscore mohan that's my instagram handle so you can follow me there get to know all the updates the upcoming classes and lot more all right so let's quickly go forward yeah so a beautiful quote for all of you the key to being happy is knowing that you have the power to choose what to accept and what to let go come on guys right there are few things which are not in our control we you know us be thinking about all that continuously thinking about what might happen what will happen so just let it go only focus on the ones that can keep you happy okay only focus on the one that you have the power to choose to what to accept and what not to so just let go of things which are trouble for all of you all right so choose the choose the right ones guys got it now moving on forward yes do not forget to hit on the subscribe button do like this video and share with all of your friends don't be selfish share it <laughs> okay so what exactly are we going to be learning in this chapter is first we will start off with the introduction yes whenever we start with a new chapter we obviously get introduced to it we are like hey hi how are you so we do the introduction then we will learn about the circulatory system then about excretory system or excretion of animals and transportation of substances in plants that is all we'll be covering in this chapter it's going to be super exciting with that we shall begin with the session right away first of all what exactly comes to your mind when you think about transportation guys so i transportation means getting on the car going to different places sir me going to school every morning is a transportation sir my father going to office every morning is a transportation sir so all of this is what comes to our mind when we think about transportation and you are not wrong moving from place to place of course it's transportation right but when we talk about animals or humans or plants anything transportation is very much necessary in what way in the way that the nutrients and everything in our body has to move from place to place right right for example let's talk about one of the amazing process that most of you guys know already now that is what guys that is respiration right so we all know that there is a beautiful process called as respiration right what is respiration guys very simple right in respiration what happens when you talk about respiration the oxygen first of all glucose is converted into energy with the help of oxygen energy is released right energy is released along with carbon dioxide plus water this is respiration yeah but this happens in each and every cell so who carries this oxygen to each and every cell who carries this glucose to each and every cell who carries this carbon dioxide out of the body who moves this water around the body so how are different things moving in our body be it oxygen be it carbon dioxide be it nutrients how 
who is helping in moving all of them in our body now that is where the transportation comes into picture okay so when we learn about transportation it happens in every organism on this planet the water and nutrients required for all the metabolic activities should be transported in the body of both plants as well as animals they should move guys the basic idea is they should move from place to place okay and how does that happen that happens because of our beautiful circulatory system right look at how beautiful our circulatory system this is what is present inside us also okay now our circulatory system consists of all of this main parts the heart <laughs> blood mm, and vessels so heart is the organ which pumps the blood we all have one right yes yeah now blood is the fluid material which transports things we will learn detail about it don't worry vessels are the tubes which carry the blood okay so imagine it like this suppose you are hungry okay you are hungry and you you take your phone you look at swiggy or zomato or you you are like okay let let us order that food and you order some food who brings the food guys the delivery partner right the delivery partner carries your food from the hotel takes gets on his bike and then rides on the road and comes and gives the food to you the delivery partner is the carrier of the food similarly blood is the carrier so blood is like a delivery partner it brings substances from places takes substances from places so it is like the complete a uh, delivery partner for all the food oxygen everything okay we will learn more about that and the way that the blood uses where does the blood flow it flows in the vessels okay yes now who gives power to all of this delivery partners the heart the heart powers the delivery partners the blood is the delivery partner which goes everywhere around the body using the vessels okay now let's talk about this so when we talk about vessels guys this is entire circulatory system inside our body you can see lot of lot of tubes going here and there what are these tubes we will learn about that first of all what exactly is blood blood is something that makes us very scary you know right we get scared we are like oh my god blood i can't tolerate blood sir right so blood is red in color so it's a red color fluid that flows in our body through the blood vessels so where do they flow they have certain tubes in our body where they flow those tubes are nothing but the blood vessels so these are all the tubes in the body of of a human where the blood flows we all have this okay now it the main job of the blood you know to transport it transports substances like the digested food from the small intestine because we all know that the complete digestion happens where in the small intestine right so all that digested food is absorbed and given to the blood now blood carries this food particles to different parts of the body it also carries oxygen from the lungs so all this oxygen is reaching every cell of my body because of the blood blood is carrying it right it also transports waste right for example kidneys what do they do they absorb all the waste from the blood and they we we let it out in the form of urine we will again learn detailly about that when we learn about excretion in animals okay yes so moving forward our blood is not just red it's not just a liquid which is red it contains so many parts in it our blood is not just a single part it's made up of different components it's made up of 55 percentage of plasma 4 percentage of white blood cells and red blood cells and sorry white blood cells and platelets and 41 percentage of red blood cells my god look at that have you ever thought that blood contains all of this now what are their jobs sir why do we have plasma why do we have platelets we will learn we will learn about them one by one first when we learn about the red blood cells now these red blood cells are present so much in the blood 
In fact, the reason why the blood looks red is because of red blood cells. In the name itself, it is there, no? Red blood cells. Now, they are red in color because they have a special pigment called as hemoglobin. Now, this hemoglobin is very, very important in our body. Okay, hemoglobin is the one which carries the oxygen from the lungs. So, hemoglobin loves oxygen, okay. Whenever it goes near the lungs, if it finds oxygen, it carries oxygen and runs away. <laughs> so, hemoglobin carries oxygen. It has higher affinity towards oxygen. Okay, now, red blood cells, fine. The next one, that is the white blood cells. Now, white blood cells are like our body's army, guys. We have our own battalion inside to fight the germs. Right now, in all of our bodies, the white blood cells are like this. Where are the germs? Where are the germs? Bring me germs. They are ready to fight, of course. So, white blood cells are responsible for the immunity. It contains nucleus, right? Also, it contains two to three lobes of nucleus. Simple. Now, this fights against germs, guys. Whenever some germs enter our body, it's the white blood cells that fight it. Any foreign particle. It will kill, you know, uh, the white blood cells will kill that organism which is trying to enter our body. So, it protects our body. So, white blood cells are very, very important. Our immunity depends on the white blood cells. Okay, very cool, guys. Next, the plasma. Plasma, I always compare it like soup, guys. You know, in a, in a, in a soup, what do we have? We have the liquidy part. And we have vegetables, all that floating around, right? That liquidy part is like plasma in the blood. So plasma is the liquid component of the blood, which is most of the blood cells are suspended. So blood cells are floating around in this plasma. It's mostly made up of water up to 95% and contains some dissolved nutrients, some carbon dioxide, some oxygen and all of those particles. Okay, it's like a soup. Where in the soup, we have vegetables and everything. Like so in the plasma, we have the red blood cells. We have the white blood cells. We have the nutrients, dissolved oxygen, everything. Okay. Now, platelets. Guys, how many of you guys get hurt usually, all the time? Sir, so whenever I simply walk, I get hurt. If I sit, I get hurt. If I play, I get hurt. Right? I used to get hurt a lot. When I, when I was in school, every PT period, I used to bleed. And my mom used to be like, that is why I tell you not to play. Can't you play properly? <laughs> when we bleed, what happens, guys? For some time, it, the blood comes out. And after a while, it stops. It's not like if you cut me, blood is going to keep flowing. No. It will stop after some time. The blood clots. Okay? So these platelets are the smallest cells in the blood. They clump together to form a blood clot. Preventing the loss of blood due to bleeding, for example. If I have a small cut on my face, these platelets will come to that cut and they will block it. They will not allow any more blood to go out. So platelets are very, very, very important for the clotting of blood. Because if blood doesn't clot, all the blood will just come out of the body. For example, if you take a water balloon, pinch a hole in it, what will happen? All the water will come out, right? Same way. So platelets are very important. So we learned about the red blood cells. We learned about the white blood cells, plasma and platelets. I hope all of you guys are clear with all these four amazing components of the blood. Next, where do they flow? What is the path for them? What is the way for them? So they flow in the blood vessels or tubes in our body, right? Whenever you go to the doctor or a nurse, to take your blood sample, what do they do? Hmm. Hmm. I'm like, wait, it'll come. <laughs> there is a tube that is seen here. They will prick the needle there and then they will take. Right. So those tubes are nothing but the blood vessels where the blood flows. That is the reason why they put the needle exactly there to get the blood. So blood vessels are like tubes that carry blood in our body. There are arteries, veins and capillaries. These are the three types of blood vessels in our body. Very important. Please remember. What are they? Arteries, veins, capillaries. But for what, sir? 
everywhere there are tubes, but why different types of tubes? Why different types of blood vessels? We'll see. All right, we will see. Let's go forward. Yes, look at this arteries, veins, and capillaries. You have an artery here. From the heart, the blood comes to our you know, body, and we we utilize all this oxygenated blood. Oxygenated blood means the blood which contains oxygen. And after using the blood, we send it back to the heart using veins. So arteries are the ones which carry the blood from the heart to the entire body. So right now heart is pumping the blood in the arteries. It's also receiving the blood from the body back to the heart through the veins. And capillaries are the place where the blood is dispersed, exchange of nutrients happens, exchange of gases happen, everything. Okay, let's learn detailly about this. So arteries are the blood vessels which carry oxygenated blood. Now, I want you all to listen carefully. What are What is this oxygenated blood? The blood which contains oxygen. For example, the blood in my lungs, I mean around my lungs, in the blood capillaries, they are right now oxygenated. Right? So the, the blood is oxygenated right now. It goes to different parts of the body, uses all the oxygen, carries the carbon dioxide. So now it will become a carbon dioxide rich blood or a deoxygenated blood. Okay, so arteries are the one which carries oxygenated blood to each and every cells and tissues of the body. They carry blood from the heart to the tissues. Okay, for example, my brain cells are receiving oxygen from the heart because of the arteries. My hand is receiving oxygenated blood from the heart through the arteries. Okay, what are veins then? Now, veins are vessels which carry the carbon dioxide rich blood from the parts back to the heart. Okay, see after using all the oxygen, my brain cells are like producing carbon dioxide. So that carbon dioxide again goes to the heart through the veins. Now compared to arteries, arteries are thick walled. Their walls are thick because blood is pushed in high pressure. Heart is pumping. Puck, 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 puck very high pressure. So it is thick walled. Veins are thin walled because the pressure is not that much. Okay. And they also have valves inside them, which will allow blood to flow only in one direction. That is only towards the heart, not back anywhere. For example, the deoxygenated blood from the, from my brain cells go to the heart, never come back because we only need oxygenated blood. All right. Next one. Okay, capillaries. These are the smallest blood vessels in our body. It serves the most important task in the circulation. That is exchange of materials and, uh, you know, between the circulation and the cells. For gases, for nutrients, for exchange of a lot of things, it is the capillaries that help. The fine network makes it easy for the process of diffusion of materials due to its increased surface area. It's like, it's like spread over, guys. For example, if you look at our fingerprints, it's basically capillaries. They're all spread over to, you know, to, to, to make sure the blood flows everywhere. And there is exchange of materials happening. For example, in our lungs, in our kidneys, everywhere. Okay. It looks something like this, guys. This is what you guys might have in your book also. Let's break this down. Listen very carefully. Now, when we talk about lungs, what am I doing? I am breathing. Okay, oxygen is filled in my lungs. Now this oxygen has to reach each and every cell in the body. So who takes the oxygen? The oxygen rich blood is taken by the pulmonary vein. Okay, pulmonary vein takes it to the heart. From the heart, the oxygen rich blood has to be pumped to each and every cell of the body, right? So heart pumps it. So in the artery, it goes to the capillaries where it goes to each and every cell of the body. After using the oxygen, all the carbon dioxide is again picked up, sent back to the heart through the vein. From the vein goes to the lungs again, through pulmonary artery. So from the heart, it goes to lungs again where it is exhaled. 
very simple when we inhale pulmonary vein takes it to the heart from the heart artery takes it to the body from the body the carbon dioxide rich blood goes back to the heart through the veins from the heart it goes back to the lungs through pulmonary artery simple as that yes now look at this when we talk about pulse what exactly is pulse guys when we talk about pulse pulse is if you all keep a you know finger like this under your thumb you will feel a pulsating you know feeling in your thumb right that's where the doctors check for your pulse so what is this pulse this is a continuous pumping of blood in the arteries which results in a rhythmic throbbing which is called as a pulse every time the heart pumps book you get this book you get that so blood is moving forward every time the heart pumps the blood moves forward that is that throbbing that we get you you guys can feel it just keep your finger below your thumb you can feel it so each throbbing means every time your heart is pumping the blood the blood gives that throb or we can feel that throb here okay that's a pulse now a resting person usually somebody like you guys who's resting right now watching my video you will have up to 72 to 80 beats per minute that's your pulse rate okay or somebody who's you know active right now like me i'm walking here and there i'm talking here and there i am also moving my hands legs i'm moving a lot of things so for somebody like me my heart rate will obviously be more right exactly so for a resting person the usual heart rate or the pulse rate is 72 to 80 beats per minute got it yes now heart so heart is a muscular organ in animals that pumps the blood through the blood vessels to all parts of the body okay to all parts of the body when we talk about hearts it's a beautiful organ very important organ so heart consists of four chambers guys imagine like four boxes it consists of four chambers top two bottom two okay now why do they have different chambers to stop oxygen rich blood mixing with carbon dioxide rich blood to stop that mixing we have four chambers all right got it yes now the upper two chambers are called as atria the bottom two chambers are called ventricles so why do we have different chambers to prevent mixing oxygen rich blood with carbon dioxide rich blood it can't mix right now this is your main diagram this will help you understand everything i want you guys to leave everything right now and focus here okay <laughs> so we saw that from the lungs the oxygen rich blood enters okay which is taken to the heart using pulmonary vein so pulmonary vein takes the oxygen rich blood from the lungs back to the heart in the top in the upper atria from the atria it enters into the ventricle from the ventricle it goes to different parts of the body using arteries it's also called as aorta okay aorta after that it goes to you know different blood tissues capillaries basically gets utilized all the oxygen is converted into carbon dioxide now the carbon dioxide rich blood comes back to the right ventricle through the vena cava or basically uh, you know we have the veins and from there it goes to the lungs back through the pulmonary artery and exhaled out and thrown out you can see how four chambers are working together for this process okay so this here is from the upper body this here is from the lower body it receives all the deoxygenated blood like this okay so we have two ventricles i mean uh, i mean two ventricles at the bottom and two atria at the top got it this is how the blood flows in our body through veins and arteries simple as that guys got it so what do you see right here i'll repeat once again the oxygenated blood from the lungs go to the heart using pulmonary vein from the heart it goes to different parts of the body through systemic artery or arteries from the body it goes back to the heart that is the deoxygenated blood 
through the systemic veins and from the veins from the heart it goes back to the lungs by the pulmonary artery simple as that this is how the circulation happens in the human body got it so right now if i'm breathing the oxygen rich blood goes to the heart using pulmonary vein from my heart my heart is pumping that oxygen rich blood to different parts of my body right by using systemic arteries after utilizing the oxygen the carbon dioxide rich blood is again collected from the body taken back to my heart using the systemic veins from the heart the the carbon dioxide rich blood is pumped back to the lungs by using the pulmonary artery and from there it's exhaled out the carbon dioxide comes out okay very simple concept guys it might look very complicated but very simple okay even this diagram will help you a lot see pulmonary vein systemic artery systemic vein pulmonary artery simple simple this is for oxygen rich blood this is for carbon dioxide rich blood same thing happens here see one side completely you have oxygen rich blood right towards your right you have completely oxygen rich blood towards your left you have completely carbon dioxide rich blood got it so what is a heartbeat then a heartbeat is a rhythmic contraction and relaxation this is a heartbeat okay so a rhythmic contraction and relaxation of the heart muscles that produce a specific sound called lup tup lup tup is called as heartbeat so an average heartbeat of a adult person as i told you for a resting person is 72 to 80 beats when he is resting during fast beating of heart that means the blood is pumped more rapidly if you are running if you are dancing that means that you need more blood you need more oxygen so your heart is pumping fast okay how do we detect the heartbeat how do doctors detect it by using a stethoscope good that's what they use <laughs> all right guys so that is all about today guys so we learned a lot of amazing things we learned about how transportation happens in humans basically so where we learned about the blood which consists of the plasma red blood cells white blood cells and platelets then we talked about the blood vessels that is the your arteries veins and capillaries then we talked about heart which has four chambers top two atria and bottom two ventricles is what we saw and in the coming classes we'll be learning about more exciting things guys so i hope all of you guys had fun and do not forget to check out the v quiz i want you guys all to check the week quiz right away and tell me or, or show me how much you understood in today's session where can you find the link for the quiz all you have to do is go to the description in the video if you guys go to the description you'll be having a week quiz link like this click on the link you'll be able to take up the week quiz also don't forget to check out the vedantu courses so if you are from grade 7 click on this and check out the vedantu courses you are getting one year course for just 8100 along with lot of other amazing things guys check this website out and take up the courses all right so i hope all of you guys had fun learning with me today we will definitely meet up in the coming class so don't you forget about subscribing and sharing this video and liking this i'll meet you all in the second part of this chapter until then this is me one signing off all of you take care stay safe stay as lovely as always guys bye bye